Recently, I have had a lot of accusations of war hacking in Warzone, but in reality, there have actually been a number of subtle and secret changes to how Warzone's audio system is working, some of which were disclosed in the recent blog. It allows me to do some pretty phenomenal things in Warzone and greatly improve my game. I'm going to start this with a controversial statement, but I actually think Warzone's audio right now is actually really good. There are definitely some things wrong with it and some things that still need tweaking, but the general positional and footstep audio is in a really solid position right now. So if you want to get spam reported like I do in solos, trios, quads, or whatever you happen to be playing, this video is going to show you how to get the best out of Warzone's newest and latest audio systems without having to do a degree in audio study, change your settings, rip out your cables, or for whatever reason, become a computer scientist. You don't need to do anything to your audio. You don't have to mod anything. You don't need any special effects. This is just showing you all of the things that you can do to maximize your effectiveness in game. Now, before we talk about what's changed and how you can use it, there are a couple of ground rules because a few things are worth having, generally speaking, for audio, but you don't need anything special. To start with, I always use the headphone mix in Warzone, and I also always use stereo mixes in pretty much every first-person shooter. Any kind of surround sound mix or artificial surround sound mix is just a load of nonsense, and default stereo mixes are definitely for the best. And you also want to balance your audio, generally speaking, both in terms of what you're hearing in-game and also any comms you have with your teammates. I 100% recommend turning off all types of music in the game, reducing the announcer volume so you don't have a guy shouting in your ear whenever something even marginal happens in the match, and most importantly as well, reducing your overall voice comm audio. You want to hear the game more than you're hearing your teammates communicating with you. And if you're playing on PlayStation, Xbox, or Discord, and you have the functionality to deafen yourself so that you can't hear your teammates speaking, that's also really helpful to have. And the reason for that is very simple. There are some instances where you just need to deal with the sound cues in front of you and play the sound cues around you, rather than having to hear your teammates talk about whatever they happen to be talking about. I do this very regularly on stream. I will just kill the audio connection to my teammates and I use Discord to do that. But there are similar functionalities on other headsets or if you were so inclined and you don't have that functionality, just dialing your teammates audio down a fair bit is a really good thing to do. So let's talk about what's changed. Now, what has changed is something called audio occlusion. And what that refers to is how sound interacts with your surroundings. The difference we're talking about here is how your audio sounds when you're inside a building versus outside of a building, or how your audio sounds when you are in a room versus outside of a room, and generally speaking, how sound interacts with the objects and structures around you in terms of what you hear and what you can't hear. You can notice this really easily in the game when you go inside of a building versus outside of a building. You'll notice a distinct echo in certain footsteps and the way they sound, and you'll also notice that your audible range will change as well. When you're outside a building versus when you're inside a building, those two values are different. And this is always why when I talk about playing games in Warzone, especially in solos, there are certain buildings that are large enough that the audible range for what you can hear is not as large as the building. So if you're in a very large building or a large structure, you need to bear in mind that you might not necessarily hear somebody push you because the building is just simply too big. But the biggest change that's been made is that the audio occlusion has been generally reduced so that sound is traveling more when you're inside a building. Not only the clarity of the audio you're hearing, but also the volume as well. And this means that you can very easily hear if your building's being pushed, you can hear whether somebody is inside or outside, and you can also hear certain audio cues that make it distinctly obvious when somebody is in your building, around your building, or outside of your building. The biggest difference you're going to notice now is that if somebody is in your building, the clunk of the footstep is more prominent. Whereas if somebody is outside of your building or in the next building over, you're going to notice more of an echo. You'll also very easily distinctively be able to hear if somebody is inside a building based on the clunk of a footstep inside a structure versus footsteps on grass or rocks outside of a building. And I'm going to play some audio to show you what that sounds like. Gas inbound. Safe zone relocated. 
This makes it so much easier to tell if somebody is in the building around you, pushing the building you're directly in, or is just generally running around the structure that you happen to be by. And if you yourself are not making a huge amount of noise by playing fairly slowly, not reloading, jumping, shuffling around, you can use these audible cues to tell exactly when somebody is pushing you, get the advantage and drop on them, and take them out. And this also applies in a squad setting as well. The other thing you need to know is that audio has drastically changed in terms of attacking players and pushing buildings, and this is definitely something that I've had to adjust to a huge amount whilst playing Warzone. There's been some pretty stonking changes here. To start with, there are some audio cues now which are drastically louder. Zip lines of all types, including horizontal and vertical, are hugely loud. Parachute sounds are much louder these days. And also, I've noticed specifically the metal clank of ladders has been made much, much louder. So whether you're parachuting in onto an enemy, using a zip line to push some enemies on the top of a roof, or climbing a ladder to slow push an opponent, all of these are much louder audio cues now, and the chances of you getting away with that audible cue are very, very low. Getting the drop on an opponent from above with a parachute or trying to sneak up with a zip or ladder has been made monumentally more harder, which is fair and balanced in my opinion because the audio for these things before was absolutely atrocious, but it just means that you now need an alternative sound cue to mask the cue you're making. So whether that's airstrike audio, cluster strike audio, or just something generally loud like thermites or smoke grenades, those are the only things that may obscure the audio push that you're making yourself. This is really important information to know because the number of times I've seen players push me on a zip line, push me with a parachute, and think that it's just going to be an easy kill because I'm not going to notice has been huge. And I've had so many freebies from opponents trying to drop in on my head recently when parachute audio is now really, really loud. There are other audible cues in the game which are extremely loud, and these values haven't really changed, but it's worth knowing them anyway. Smoke grenades are excessively loud, whether that's calling in a portable buy station or smoking generally. It's one of the loudest cues in the game and definitely something you'll notice. Explosions, obviously, for the most part, grenades, RPGs, vehicle explosions are generally very loud. But ones that people might not necessarily notice is that the audible range for certain things is much, much larger. So, just as an example, smoke grenades, glass breaks, and door slams actually have the largest audible range in the game, meaning that somebody four, five, six buildings away will hear you bust a door open, or they'll hear you break glass, which is why you should avoid doing those things if you don't need to as much as humanly possible, because people don't genuinely realize how much audio those things produce now compared to what they used to. With general audio being boosted when you're inside buildings now, these audible cues are even more obvious, more clear, and if somebody is in your area, whether that's in solos or quads, and you decide to bust open a door, you're basically announcing yourself to the entire area around you. With all of this information in mind, reducing the number of audio cues you make, whether that's zip lines, parachutes, metal and ladders, smoke grenades, glass breaks, or door slams, is a hugely important thing but it also means that you can now use this information to tackle other opponents. I get a huge number of kills just by waiting for these sound cues to play, figuring out where my opponent is, and pouncing when the time is right. And because I don't make a huge amount of audio myself, these players feel like they're safe. They get a false sense of security that nobody's in the building they've pushed, or nobody is in the area around them. And then all of a sudden, I appear and rinse a whole mag into them, and the game's GG. Hopefully you found this video useful, folks. If you did, please drop a like. Please consider subscribing as we're on the road to 200k, and I'll catch you again in the next one.